Well, hello and welcome everyone. My name is Celeste Harrison and I'm so glad you're joining us here today on Explore. classroom. But before we get into the lesson, I would like to say a great big hello and welcome to our viewers tuning in from all over the globe. Today's shout outs go to all the homeschools out there, the Beccaro Group, Beyond School Bells, Bluria Middle School, Cascadia Montessori, Idea, Zhang, Magnin, McCormick, Menlo Park City School District, Metzger, Navneet, Newell, North Kipling Junior Middle School, Pioneer School, Pope Elementary School, the Remote Learning Center, the Barnhouse School, Tran, and you. We are thrilled to have all of you out there with us. And with that talking from me out of the way, let's get Explorer Classroom started. I'm going to turn it over to Marcelo to share all about flowers, fruit, and the future. Take it away. Hello, everyone. Let me share my screen. So my name is Marcelo Tomé Cubo. I'm from Brazil. And well, I would like to start first by thanking National Geographic Society for inviting me here to talk today. And for all of you who joined me to talk a little about these fascinating beings that are plants. And you may think that when you heard about plants, like mm, they are boring, they do nothing, they just stand there. But I must confess that my younger self thought the same things. <laughs> so I was born in, and raised in Sao Paulo, Brazil. Here's the, the yellow dot. And Sao Paulo is the biggest city in South America. So we don't have a lot of natural attractions here, like trees, mud trees or waterfalls and stuff. But as a young kid, my parents always drove me to the coast of Sao Paulo. And there I fell in love with the nature and with the Atlantic rainforest, which is a forest we have only here in the Atlantic coast of, of Brazil. And I just fell for it and I loved to go on hikings, I loved to go to the beach, I loved to uh, animals and go into the zoo and go into natural history museums and watching wildlife documentaries and wildlife books. And by wildlife, I mean animals and dinosaurs. So I was a very animal person. And I was sure to be, I would be a veterinarian or a zoologist, work with animals, or maybe work in a zoo to tend for animals. But then I became an architect. <laughs> and so I was working with construction, with um, urban environments, and I was um, missing this link with nature. So I switched my career to landscape architecture. And then was the first time I uh, come in contact with the botanical uh, part of the world and this relationship between humans and plants. And I was still missing this link with the biological part. So I took another degree in biological science and became a biologist. Still thinking to work with birds and mammals and this kind of thing, but then plants just sweep me off my, my feet. And um, the more I learned about them, the more fascinated by them I was, and I became a botanist. And this changed my whole view of the world. So um, instead of we take plants for granted as a blurry green background, uh, when we're looking at pictures of mammals and birds and we ourselves, and but then when I start to learn about them, I could individualize them and see how complex and wonderful those beings are and how they struggle to survive as animals do. And they have amazing strategies to survive. And I realized that without them, we wouldn't be here as well. So without plants, there is no life. So what an amazing organism to study. And that's what took me to be an explorer. Um, so how do a plant survive? How does it do it without moving around? How does it flee from the sun? How does it, uh, resolve lack of water or maybe overheating. 
um, they cannot move, but they do move just on their own time, very slowly. Um, take this cactus, for example. Uh, I recorded it for six hours and compressed it in 10 seconds. So we can see the flower opening. We cannot see it in naked eye, like we would be 10 hours sitting outside, but then in a fast forward movie, we can see it moving away. Or this uh, passion fruit vine uh, trying to reach places to climb. So again, six hours recording it, so we can see this small movement and it's trying to reach higher places. And, but not all movements are that slow. Um, this is a sensitive plant or uh, touch me not, I don't know how you know them. And it reacts to our touch. And this is actually in slow motion. So it's very quick, the, the response to our touch. So the, the, the leaves just fold itself to flee from predators or from the rain or too much wind. And how do they tend for food? Where do they look for food, the plants? Usually they take nutrients from the soil, but some plants like this one, they live in very poor soil. So they don't have all the nutrients they need and they solved it by um, eating animals. They're are called carnivorous plants. So they, the, the, you can see some insects glued to the leaves. It's a butterwort and it's digesting the, the insects and then taking the nutrients to survive. And we usually think of, the, of them as food. The plant is the food, like herbivorous eat plants and we eat plants, but they don't go down quietly. They have uh, very, uh, they have weapons to defend themselves and they are usually chemical weapons and we they can hurt uh, attackers or they can taste bad or they can even kill um, anyone who tries to eat them and we take advantage of this by using them for medical purposes so we use about three uh, thirty thousand species of plants for medicinal use and um, this is about eight in every 100 species that we know today and this is only one use of plants. We can, we, if you look around carefully, you will see a lot of things are made of plants in your daily life. So you, the, even the clothes you're wearing, if they are made of cotton, plants. If this, the chair you're sitting on is made of wood, plants. And even most of our food. Even if you like don't like your vegetables, you like a meat eater, um, the cow and the poultry, they all eat plants. So without plants, we wouldn't have the meat you, you eat as well. So they are very important for our daily basis. And we cannot talk about plant diversity without talking about flowers and the diversity of flowers. They come in every shape, in every color, in different odors, and all of these to attract pollinators. There are insects or, or birds that take the pollen from one flower to the other, like this bee here, is doing this guava flower. So it's visiting this flower, then go to the next. And then once we have uh, this fecundation, we can have the fruits. So this is a, a wild strawberry here from Brazil. And this is the flower in the right button and then all the way to the major fruit. So every fruit was once a flower and then we can use it as food and animals as well. So it's very important to the ecosystem. And that is my focus of my research. Um, I'm looking around for flowers and flowers characteristics and fruits to see how they can help us unlock some mysteries of the rainforest. So especially the Atlantic rainforest here in Brazil. And how do we do this? We look for visible characteristics such as shape and color and texture and invisible ones as well like microscopic elements and chemical composition. And we join this with uh, our knowledge about the plants. So we use a, a family. I'm studying the Myrtaceae family, which is the, uh, the family from guava, from myrtle, eucalyptus. And why do you choose like to study a family? It's because we know they are more closely related between each other than to, to any other plant. 
is like uh, we humans are more closely related to apes than to any other mammal. So we, we know they are related to each other, so it's easier to know how things have changed. And then uh, they are really important as well. That's why we chose Mirtaceae in the Atlantic rainforest, because the flowers, as we saw with the bee, are, are food for insects and birds, and the fruits for mammals and other animals as well. So they're really important for the functioning of the whole forest. So first we go to the field. Here is us uh, in a field trip in a national park in Sao Paulo. And we look for the, the, the plant and have to find the plant in the midst of all the other plants. And uh, it's like finding a needle in a haystack. And I won't lie to you guys, many times we come back home empty handed and which is kind of a bit frustrating. But being in the field is the best part of the job in life. If I could, I could only be on the field and just collecting and finding because it's very um, emo, uh, exciting when you find your plant and it, it's flowering and the fruits and you can collect it. And then you collect it, collect the, the samples and take them back to the lab. And in the lab, you have all this analysis we made. So we look at them in microscopes, we cut them, we count them, measure, um, photograph them, and we get this information with gen the genetic information we have, and then we can construct uh, what we call a phylogenetic tree, which is like a genealogical tree from your family, but these are from species of plants. So you can see how they change from um, uh, in different characteristics of fruits and flowers, how different species have different um, colors or textures and what this means uh, for their evolution, for the, the diversity of plants in the, the planet. And then this information can also uh, help us find new sources of food. So new, new fruits we can eat and new medicines we can take and even can help us cope with climate change. We can predict how these plants will react to climate change. And that is all the scientific part of the job we do. And there's also the awareness part, uh, which is trying to raise awareness for the importance of um, conserving this really threatened ecosystem, which is the Atlantic rainforest. Um, the rainforest uh, originally was from the south of Brazil up to the northeast of Brazil. So all this green, light green area, um, the yellow dot is Sao Paulo. So that was the original uh, area of Atlantic rainforest. And today we have lost almost 90% of the forest. So we really have to care for what, what, is le what is left. And even with only this left, it's the most diverse um, forest in, in Brazil. Uh, there are some diversions about if it's Amazon or Atlantic rainforest, but they are almost there. And so what do we do? We try to tell people by making short movies, explaining the importance, and by making illustrations about the plants um, that to, so the people can know the plants we have there, and maybe they can always shift that, that site and instead of seeing plants at the background, start to see them as protagonists of the life on earth and try to help us to um, conserve and preserve for the future. And you all guys can help us do it. You can, let me stop my screen. You can all, we can always um, go to your neighborhood and see the plants around you and start to look, change the way you look at them. So we start really observing them and seeing the whole, all the details of the plants and not only plants, everything in the natural world. So we started a natural journal, for example. You just take a, a notebook and a pen and a pencil and keep on drawing things you find interesting in nature, which is very uh, nice because you train your drawing because it's a training exercise. So your drawing will get better and you get, start noticing things you have never noticed before. So that's one goal to, to, to keep in mind. Every time you take something to um, uh, draw, try to find something you have never noticed before in that thing. Even if it's a leaf you have passed 
3,000 times, tried looking at it in the magnifying glass or something, tried to find something new and it. Because the wonderful, wonderful things of nature are in the details, so you can find and can try and help us unlock some mysteries of the nature as well. So let's do it. Brilliant. And Marcelo, as we start to wrap up, do you have any advice for all the young people out there watching you today? Yeah, um, as you all saw from my, uh, my life so far, um, don't be afraid to change your path, the path you, you thought you wanted. So um, if you decided to be an architect, then you can become a biologist and then you can become an illustrator. You don't have to follow this very strictly. So don't be afraid to change. Don't be afraid to uh, make your passions, uh, follow your passions and go with it. You, uh, things usually, you, at some point they settle um, in place. So go for it and no, don't forget to explore the world around you and explore your passions and your, your urges. I don't know, it's like go to places. Yeah, just be happy. Make sure you're happy doing what you're doing. And yeah, I think that 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 is. Don't be afraid to to change. Incredible advice. Thank you so much, Marcelo, for doing this very very cool work, and also for hanging out with us to share it. Thank you to yeah, the super. teachers who make super cool stuff like this happen for your classes, and thank you most of all to the students out there for all of your very inspiring questions. Most of these could be like dissertations that uh, could get you your own doctorate at some point, and then you can work with Marcelo yourself. So keep it up. Your questions are absolutely fabulous and inspiring. I hope that you join many more upcoming Explore Classroom events. We've got traditional Polynesian ocean voyaging, an expedition to find the world's northernmost terrestrial life forms, uh, sunken slave ships, geology, all kinds of really, really neat stuff is coming up on the schedule. You can register your students for a shout out during the event and a chance to be featured up here on screen with an explorer at naturaloed.org slash explorer classroom. On a personal note, this is my last week here as your explorer classroom host. I'm moving on to a new role. And before I go, I just wanted to let you all know that it has been an absolute honor to learn alongside all of you for these past years. Have an amazing day. Stay curious, keep exploring, and we can't wait to have you back on Explorer Classroom soon. Bye.